Hello everyone, so you want to find out what is the best possible way to gain Master Rank, where can you level up every single item, and how to become that juicy and beautiful Legendary Rank 2 player. So without any dilly dallying, let's continue on with the video. So a little bit of a pretense before we get into leveling and stuff like that. So first of all, Warframe usually sometimes has a double affinity weekend. This is usually when it's like, you know, some kind of holiday or some kind of event. So that means it is a community booster. Now, if you go to the market, go to, of course, equipment and buy yourself another affinity booster, it is going to be combined into a four times booster. So two times the community one, two times the one from the market. That means four times, of course, so, you know, quick and simple maths. If you go to a relay and you're lucky enough to get an affinity blessing, that is another 0.5, basically meaning you're going to get 4.5 times the affinity, which makes leveling incredibly easy. Now, a couple of things that I want to mention. Now, I, when I was around Master Rank 25, 22, 23, what I did is I bundled up Warframes and their weapons. So what I did is I purchased, mass purchased a lot of weapons, like 10 to 15 weapons, like five or six Warframes. And then when there was a double affinity booster, I basically leveled up then because that is the best time to level up. I also bought like arch wings, arch wing weapons, stuff like that. I mean, nowadays when I'm legendary rank one, it doesn't really work like that because there, I, there's not a lot, a lot of stuff for me to level. But when that is happening, that is my personal recommendation. Buy a lot of weapons, you're going to suffer through those three days or two days or however long the booster lasts, but it is going to be worth it. Believe me. Uh, usually when I did that, I was able to increase my mash rank by one and a half just by doing that. So honestly, pretty goddamn efficient. Now, we have got that out of the way. Let's talk about new player mastery rank again. Now, you just started off Warframe, you're fresh in the game, you played a little bit of missions, you're quite interested, and you just found out that there's actually a number next to your name. You know, maybe saying, what the hell is this? Mastery rank? What does that mean? Well, mastery rank basically means your progression in mastery of all the weapons, Warframes, and missions, and stuff like that in the game. Now, how do you increase it? First of all, you can only increase your master rank by uh, once a day, I guess. So once in 24 hours, so keep that in mind. So if you do fail the master rank test, you're going to have to wait 24 hours to actually be able to play it again. So try not to fail it. I bring you basically your best gear, I guess, as a new player. Now, one of the easiest ways to gain master rank as a new player is honestly completing the star chart. Uh, doing these little nodes, doing the junctions as well, and you're just completing the planets and the star chart itself. Here, you all, of course, completing the star chart is amazing in many different ways because it unlocks new nodes, new planets, new resources, new items, new missions, quests, and stuff like that, so that is pretty good. A couple of disclaimers, quests do not give you master rank points, so just keep that in mind, uh, but it would be pretty good if you do complete some quests. Whilst you're playing, there's a couple of things that I want you guys to keep in mind. The open worlds, there's three of them. Now, there is Cetus on Earth, on Venus we have Fortuna, and on Deimos we have the Necrolisk. Try to somehow level these up passively, you know, just while you're playing, you know, once or twice a day, you know, just level them up a little bit, trying to get their standing up and up and up and getting your rank up with the open world syndicates up and up and up. Now, you don't have to do it in, in like 10 days, like uh, making a video on YouTube. I maxed out every single syndicate in one day somehow, but slowly but surely level these up. It is going to be very, very good. Complete invasions. Invasions will reward you with faction specific uh, resources, such as, for example, Field Drawn. You also have Mutagen Mass and Mutagen uh, or Detonite Injector. Sorry. Now, you will be getting Field Drawn, Mutagen, and I think it's called Injector uh, Samples. I forgot what the Injector one is called. But those are going to be pretty good because you're going to be using them later down the line. You also, in invasions, you have stuff like Orc and Catalyst and Reactor Blueprints. So, you know, maybe if you're interested, you can definitely do these as well. So, you you know, completing these invasions, completing the search and everything. Now, you want to earn a little bit more Master Rank. Well, the best way is going to be purchasing weapons and warframes. So, uh, when we go up into weapons, the first thing that I recommend you do is level up the weapons that only require credits, like the MK1 weapons. So, Bratton, Paris, Strun, there's also a normal Strun here, 
If we go into secondary, same thing applies. We have the Akalato. That's going to be pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to see the best that I can because my microphone's kind of in front of the screen, so I can't really see the best. But there you go, the MK1 the Kunai Furious. Same goes for melee weapons. Now, after that, once you did that, honestly, try to see which weapon looks the simplest. I guess that is the best recommendation that I give. So you might be looking, hmm. This Sag Magnus looks interesting. Oh, let's see, what do I need? Oh, I need two Magnuses. Okay, how do I get a Magnus? Let's try to find it. Oh, let's just type it in it because it's going to be much easier. Okay, so I need two Magnuses. Okay, I can get two Magnuses, level up one Magnus and get a second one. And then basically I kill two birds with one stone. I level up a Magnus and I also level up the Ark Magnus. Of course, it doesn't have to be this specific weapon. You could basically choose any weapon, but the weapon that looks the simplest usually means it requires the least amount of resources. So let's say Anku, for example... Now, this one, as you can see, doesn't require a lot of resources, but it is a theme in the Tenno Lab Dojo, which will be showing soon enough. So, that is the next thing. You leveled up all the credit weapons. Now, purchase the weapons that actually require you to purchase the blueprint for them, and then, you know, putting in resources and credits inside of them. Once you've done with that, you want to get yourself some Warframes down the line. Banshee, uh, Volt, Zephyr, Wukong, and Neja are amazing Warframes to get because they're incredibly easy to get. You get these Warframes inside of your Tenno Lab Dojo, and I'll show you, I, I guess I'll show you that as well, uh, but these Warframes are incredibly easy to get. Uh, do require, of course, a little bit of credits and resources, but incredibly easy, you don't have to fight any bosses for it, you just basically go, buy them, and then once you can, level them up. Rhino as well, uh, you're also gonna get, like, uh, Warframe weapons, or I guess Warframe parts uh, through bosses on the planets as well. So that is, of course, uh, uh, you know, considered there. So I don't really need to mention it that way. But level up Warframes as well. Companions. Uh, companions are incredibly good to level up because they reward you this amount of mastery rank. Uh, you can purchase them. They do require a little bit more credits. Uh, but, of course, they come with their own specific weapon. Uh, so in total, you're going to be earning around 8,000 mash rank points, which is honestly pretty good as a low rank player. Try to get these. You're going to get a Taxon for free once you uh, actually do a Junction. Uh, and you're going to complete the Howl of Kubro quest. So you're going to get another Kubro. So that's pretty good. Uh, in pets, we have a lot here. We have Kavats, which are basically cats. Kubros. Uh, Sentients, which are, you know, Sentinels, I guess. Or whatever they're called. I always complete, co uh, confuse Sentients and uh, Sentinels. Uh, these are Sentinels. Uh, get these. Complete these. You also have the Prime Variants. But we'll talk about those a little bit later on. Uh, and stuff like that. So complete the Companions as well. There's plenty of them. Uh, inside of the, I guess, the demos, you have two as well. Uh, you have uh, inside of the planes, yeah, you can you can actually get, uh, go get Kavats in the planes by scanning them. And that's pretty much it. I'm trying to remember what other pets we have, but that's pretty much it. So, as a new player, you pretty much did that. One thing that you can do is once you find the clan through recruiting chat, I already explained that in many of my beginner guide videos, you found a clan. Enter the clan dojo, and I'll explain where you need to go to get the most easily obtainable weapons, let's call it that. Now, uh, keep in mind, you did invasions, you got yourself some uh, field drawn orcan cells, uh, sorry, not orcan cells, but the interjectors, and also some mutagen mass. The Tenno Lab is your best option. Inside of the Tenno Lab are the, let's say, quote-unquote, cheapest weapons. Like, for example, now, the Baza, for example, does require you to get a Forma. Forma can be easily farmed, but just by doing Relic Runs, uh, and you can make Forma easily with that way. But, of course, there are weapons that don't require any Forma, like the Gunson, for example. The Gunson doesn't require Forma, it doesn't require that many resources. And then, what did we search up earlier? It was the Anku. There you go. Purchase the Blueprint and make it here. So, this Tenno Lab is going to get you out of a really juicy pickle. Now... Intermediate players, you have played enough invasions to get enough uh, faction-specific mods, you're inside of your clan, then you have the energy, chem, and bio lab. Of course, energy being uh, corpus, then chem being uh, grenier, and then bio being, of course, infested. So, let's say you farmed up uh, detonated injectors, so you go to the chem lab, purchase the weapons here. You know, purchase the, for example, the Keshek. Now, this one actually requires Kuva, so I guess that could be a little bit of a challenge, but not really. But the twin uh, Conqueror Breeze, let's say about that. You need to conquer, so get those. Uh, you also can buy Detonite Injector, uh, of course, uh, blueprints, which, of course, the Detonite, I guess, uh, samples are used for. So I also go to the Bio Lab. You can buy Mutagen Mass here. Uh, this requires what's it called a Mutagen Sample. You're going to get loads and loads of these. 
through just gameplay itself. So this is what you can use them for. For example, I actually need Field Drone, so I'm going to get another couple of blueprints here. But there's the, well, again, this one doesn't require a lot. Uh, so you know, keep that in mind. It doesn't really, I think it's uh, mostly just a tiny amount of resources. Yeah, so not really much to worry about. So once you gain this faction-specific resources, what you can do is purchase the weapons themselves. So, this is a cool way to get yourself some faction-specific weapons. Now, once you purchase the Neja, Banshee, Zephyr, Volt, and Wukong, there's no more Warframes inside of the Tenno Lab. The best thing that you can do, possibly, is going to be getting primed weapons and Warframes. Now, you have been playing a decent time, you know how to hunt relics, you have many, many different relics, uh, and not many, just a lot of relics, and... Honestly, some of these Warframes, like I, for example, I sold Harrow recently, is around 30 Platinum. Uh, some unvolted relics, or I guess some unvolted Warframes are worth quite cheap, like 30, 40, 50 Platinum. Honestly, if you can't get those Warframes and you're really struggling to get those certain Warframes, uh, what I recommend you do is, like, for example, try to get at least two or three parts if you possibly can and then buy the rest for Platinum. Uh, that's gonna be really really good honestly primed weapons and warframes are incredibly easy to get if you know how to make a you know a really big sum of platinum because these can be extremely good for leveling up so as you can see i have basically leveled up every single primed weapon and also primed warframe so and that was actually i think the second or third thing that i did once i got up to bash rank 20 uh, something like that uh i leveled up just basically everything that i had left uh, i think uh, I just had some new items left and basically that is it. Now, uh, you have to keep in mind there are some weapons that you're not going to be able to access even as an intermediate player. Uh, once you've gotten yourself a Kubro, a Kavat, you got yourself a Panzer Vopophile and some other uh, pets like that, you're pretty much set with that. Uh, get yourself archerings at this point, get yourself different archering weapons, because those are going to be honestly a really really tedious to level up and try to level them up when there is a two times affinity, a community booster. So as you can see there's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 7 different uh, weapons for, or I guess melee weapons for the... Uh, for archering, I think there should be a little bit more, I just can't seem to find them, but... At this point, try to get yourself also some coup of weapons as well, some tenant weapons. Uh, for example, I think I'm missing like four or five uh, coup of weapons. Yeah, as you can see, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm missing seven uh, coup of weapons, but I leveled up every single other tenant weapon. Uh, on the Ferox, I'm actually pretty close, but we're just gonna ignore that. Uh, try to get those as well. Try to get some uh, some Railjack ones as well, like the Carmine Penta. Try to get, of course, some archery weapons such as the Morga and Cortage. These are gotten inside of, of course, uh, Isolation Vaults and stuff like that. Try to get something that a newer player basically can't. Uh, once you're match rank 10, 15, somewhere around that match rank, you're going to be having pretty good income for Platinum. You might be even buying Platinum for like a 75% discount. Borrow Katir might be arriving as well. Buy those weapons as well. Uh, once I mean, uh, what do I mean by that? I mean the uh, Prisma weapons, for example, like these ones. I only don't have the machete. I can't bother to buy it or uh, the wraith weapons as well you know, buy these as well he sells some of them not all of them i think the latron shrun and uh, the ignis and the furox rate are not sold by him actually the ignis rate is but the furox and the shrun and latron are not so try to get those as well you know try to get the uh, the wraith the uh, prism weapons from him as well uh, again another thing that a new player sadly won't be able to do so once we've done that, also syndicate weapons, uh, forgot to say, syndicate weapons are pretty good to get, you, you should be somewhere around uh, close to, to maxing out your syndicate. Uh, the ones that are in minuses, of course, what you can do is just basically buy it for all other people, so that's cool. Now, higher level players. Higher level players is going to be a little bit difficult, because at this point you mostly leveled up everything. What I can recommend is getting Necromex, if you, if you don't have, I mean, you're probably going to have Void Drug already, but try to get Bone Widow, uh, try to level up, uh, sadly, I, I can't even be bothered to say it because it b brings me so much pain, uh, try to level up, what's it called, the K-Drives. Honestly, I have not leveled up K-Drives yet, and I'm, I can't really be bothered to, but I will because I want to reach that Legendary Rank 2, but uh, level up K-Drives. Now, why did I leave this for last? I left this for last because it is the most demanding, even for me as a, as a high-end player who honestly played the open worlds pretty decently, I was still able to struggle with this. Kit guns and Zaws. 
Now, kit guns, you can access uh, them inside, of course. Uh, you can access these kit guns inside of, I can't seem to say the name, the Fortuna and also Necrolisk. Uh, inside of Fortuna, you have more. Uh, in total, you have six heads. So what is that? I'll explain that in a second. So go to Root Zud, click on Browse, and go to Chamber. Now, there's six chambers. These six chambers give you the Master Rank, not uh, the grip or the loader. So basically equip yourself a chamber and then the grip and the loader can be basically anything. So these two, the space laser or the spore laser, sorry, and the vermin splicer is gotten inside of the necrolisk. These four, the catch moon gaze, rattle guts and the tomb figure are gotten inside of here. You need a lot of standing, you need a lot of resources, especially open world resources for this, so keep that in mind. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Especially if you're gonna make all six at once. Now, you got yourself a kit gun, you leveled it up, you have to do one more thing. You have to guild it. After gilding it for 10 shelter debt bonds and 5,000 standing, you are able to level it up again and allowing you to gain that mastery rank. Same thing functions with Zaws. Zaws have, I think, in total uh, 10 heads, including the two Plague uh, plague Star events, uh, so keep that in mind. Those two Plague Star, is, it's gonna appear every around 3 or 4 months, so you don't really have to worry about it a lot, uh, but honestly, uh, Zaws are a little bit more demanding because you need a lot more resources because there's 10 in total, or I think 12 in total heads, instead of there being 6. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's quickly go there just to show you. I wanted to do this live. I didn't really want to, you know, edit it and everything because it makes it more connected, I guess. So, Zaws, let's check it out. We have 3, 6, 9, 11. So 11 plus 2, that is in total 13 heads. Honestly, uh, I was lucky enough because I have the Bala, Dohrim, and Stefan. Uh, I have those just because I actually leveled them up before because I used them as my Exodia Contagion builds. But everything else, as you can see, I still haven't made these three. Uh, I've done everything else, I just didn't make these three, and I need even more uh, links and grips. So, honestly, believe me, it gets tedious very, very fast. But what do I recommend, even for kit guns and for this as well, which I'm going to do right now because I actually need to. First of all, what do I recommend you do? Purchase the Ruhag and or Jai blueprint for the link. For the handle, pick anything here up until Quoth. Now, uh, you can actually do these as well, I just prefer up to Quoth. And the heads are going to be from Bala to Dorum. Why do I say this? Because, first of all, this is the cheapest way you can do this. If you don't have max rank all strong, like I don't for example, you are going to really struggle and it's going to be a pain in the ass to get all of that standing. Now, uh, these are going to be all 1000 each. Keep in mind so that there's uh, actually 11 here as I said. So there's 11 here uh, in total that is... No, actually there's less here. There's 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, 9. So there's 9. So that's 9k plus of course another 9k plus of course another 9k. That is uh, going to be 32 thousand actually 27 sorry 27,000 standing which honestly could be someone uh could be like two days of grinding three days of grinding and keep in mind you actually have to guild those weapons as well requiring another 5,000 standing so yeah this is why i kept it at the end because you're going to need a lot of stuff for it again once you're at this level, try to level up K-Drives, try, try to level up your second Necromic. All of your Archwings and Archwing weapons should be already leveled up. Now try to get at least like 80 to 90% of the Kuo weapons and the Tenant ones as well. Farm up, of course, Corrupted Hollow Keys for the melee ones, so you can purchase them off of uh, whatever his name is, the guy from Parent Sequence, this guy. Uh, of course, you should already have all of these Syndicate weapons leveled up and everything. Now, once you have completed that, and also some, you should probably have every single pet leveled up, uh, and uh, I think, oh, Intrinsics as well, Intrinsics, I completely forgot about this, uh, Intrinsics do also reward you with Affinity, uh, sorry, Master Rank Points, so these are Intrinsics, leveling these up is also going to be really, really good for, uh, what's it called, for Master Rank, as you can see, I basically, I'm missing two, in total, so now actually I'm missing three, so I'm missing three in total, and that's basically a level up those Intrinsics as well. Now, what is the best way to level up everything? First of all, let's start off with weapons themselves and also companions. So, basically, one of the best things that I recommend you do is pick up Zephyr, then 
what you want to do is put on the Spectral Rage uh, ability instead of her first, and then the Spectral Siphon Augment. I have been playing ESO for the past couple of days, uh, past couple of three days, when I say past couple of days, and ESO is a total buttfuck at the moment, it's it's completely random, you don't get a lot of XP from it like you used to do, uh, I basically takes me three rounds to level up one weapon, because no one's doing the killing, it's just random Warframes, random people running around, so... I did this. I put this mod, I put this setup, you basically equip three weapons, and then you go on to Hydron. It can be a public, it can be a solo lobby, it does not really matter. Go inside of here, and then what you want to do is cast your fourth ability, your Tornadoes, cast your first ability, which is Spectral Rage, inside of that circle, gain a lot of energy, and attack the Tornadoes either with either weapon that you want to level up. If there's three, then with every weapon, you know, little bit by little bit, and level up weapons that way. Believe me, it is more efficient than playing ESO at the moment. It maybe it'll change over time, maybe you get lucky with a good squad, but honestly, in my opinion, Hydron is much better for that. Now, if you want to level up Warframes, it's a little bit different. You can also level up Companions this way as well. Honestly, Companions, all you need to do is put them in your Companion slot and just keep them alive, and basically that is it. Uh, also, keep in mind, there are uh, companions and robots that you get from uh, Tenant, uh, Tenant Sisters as well, and some MOAs uh, inside of Fortuna, but those are already considered. If you're a high-level player, you will know about that, but now if you don't know, now you know. You also have to craft MOAs as well, so that's going to require a lot more resources. So yeah, uh, but uh, companions and warframes, honestly, go up on YouTube, search up the uh, stealth method for uh, affinity farming. I think it's, uh, I don't think, I know it's it's with uh, Equinox, and basically do it that way. Uh, or with Equinox, I think it was with uh, Silent, no, not with Equinox, I'm a dumbass. Uh, but it's with... Um, I, uh, yes, it's Savage Silence uh, with Banshee's uh, augmented ability, and you can level it that way. Honestly, what I do is I just level it up once on Hydron and then go into ESO, but that's just me. Uh, for Necromex, honestly, the best way is only playing uh, either uh, bounties in Deimos or going into Railjack missions if you're lucky enough to have the Intrinsic to actually summon your Necromech. Uh, the best way to level up Archwings and Archwing weapons is going to be Neptune Salacia, because I've tried playing on Deimos and doing bounties with it, the weapons are just too weak for Deimos enemies, so Salacia is pretty good, especially if it's a 4.5x, uh, uh, I guess if you, if you have an affinity 4.5x boost, uh, Salacia is going to be incredibly good for that. So. I think I basically told everything. K drives inside of for two uh, inside of Venus. Basically, uh, you can't really choose a different location for that. Uh, then I'm pretty much sure that is it. Of course, Railjack. You need to complete Railjack missions to get, increase your intrinsic. So keep that in mind. And then, of course, yeah, I'm actually pretty much I'm pretty much sure I covered everything. Kid Guns and Zaws. You can also level them up in normal gameplay, so it doesn't really matter. But. That has been me. Hope you guys enjoyed. This was a really long and drawn out video, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it was well detailed enough because I really want to help out as many people with this as humanly possible and try to make this as, you know, helpful as possible. So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, do leave a like, a comment, and do subscribe for more. I'll see you guys on the next one. And the Gaming Weasel, over and out.